Once upon a time, two boys grew up playing hockey in the village of Terrace, British Columbia. One of them went on to play in the National Hockey League. The other became a comedian. Now, one flies planes and coaches youth hockey. The other is still a comedian and owns new skates. This is their podcast, Enjoying Orange Slices with Jeff and Ian. Hello, Jeff Sharples. My name's <laughs> Ian Bag, and then we also have Darren Millard's in today yeah. because it is Enjoying Orange Slices with our buddy Millard. Hey, buddies. How are hey you guys. doing? What's let's up, stop Mallard? Every, let's stop everything right now. So two out of three people on this show were on national TV last night, and I was watching them. And it was fantastic in between periods. I loved it. Oh, it was fantastic. Congratulations, guys. Uh the the what 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 the intermission show is called. What is it called? Uh Mallard's Flyby. What what's it called? What's it called? <laughs> sure. Mallard's Nest. Oh, love it. Is that what it is? Ducks don't nest, do they? <laughs> of course. Where do you think they lay their eggs? In a nest? They put, they put them in a nest and then then yeah. and, and and Derek Englum was on it, right? England. Uh, we should, you should we should put a Millard on egg. <laughs> we we should have called it uh, bubbles with Mallard. Yeah. So uh, Sharples was on the uh, intermissions and post game show with me and Derek England on the Vegas Golden Knight broadcast last night. Not national, but uh, but we do cover a lot of areas. So uh, the highly uh, anticipated return of Jeff Sharples was fantastic and was so uh, my 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 voice therapist uh, loved Sharples. I had a, a morning session today uh, trying to get the voice back, and uh, she was talking all about Sharples. Oh my God, I'm he's got sure it. Sure, she was. Yeah, the sure ladies are swooning <laughs> all yeah. across the oh, they're southern going crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, so uh, uh, you know what? We got to talk about uh, since we're talking about you and me, Mallard. And uh, I said to Lord Bag when he first hooked up to Zoom this morning, I said, "You know, we spent the first part of our lives. He was watching me a little bit on TV, and I've, you know, little bit. The last oh my twenty God, years, nothing, all I've done is watch him. Everything in Terrace was Jeff Sharples. <laughs> couldn't. So <laughs> couldn't I, asked him, he did. I I would listen to the radio of uh, uh, Vancouver Canucks radio. All of a sudden, Sharples is on that. I'm 15 years old. I'm like, he lives down the street. There's no point in this kid being on. Why is he on? And then uh, boom, he's in the so NHL, we had a laugh TV. And then, uh, anyways, now. Now and then, I finally he has to listen to me, and because of you, boom, Jeff is back in my living room just looking at me. Jeff was very serious last night. He had his I, he had his hockey face on. But you're now able I, to push him a little bit. You're able to push him a little bit into fun. You, you know that, right? Oh, no. I watched. We, I watched you. We will have more fun as it goes along. Uh, right. My voice being what it is, and Sharples being new to the audience. I want to make sure that we establish the credibility right away, and then we'll be us. Like, there, there will come a time when, <laughs> when we'll they destroy will, when it. The bosses will go. <laughs> um, can you just like my wife does? Uh, can you stop being you for a little yeah. bit? Uh, uh, we we will be us uh, uh, for a while. That happened. She said that to me on our honeymoon in, in Paris. She's like, oh, um, this for, is you for, for, for twenty minutes. She said, uh, "Hey, for twenty minutes, can you stop being you? And then you can go back to it. But I just need a twenty minute it. break." Love she, it. She went down the street and had a shot in a in some uh, some sparkly wine and came back and saw you. Oh, she was already doing that. She just needed me to be quiet for twenty minutes. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Just to let if you're just tuning in for the first time, Darren doesn't usually like sound doesn't sound like a fourteen year old going through puberty. He does his no. voice doesn't usually do this. He usually sounds really good. But uh, he had a moose run in front of his bicycle, and he screamed really loud, and he lost his voice. And now he's just going through some voice struggles, but he's almost 100%. Jeff, on the other hand, sounds like this all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and the older I get, the, the worse it gets, but... What what do you hey. what do you what do you sound how your speech is on the plane? Like what do you say? Oh, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, it's uh, funny that uh you two guys always have the microphone, so you always run the show. But when you welcome people on board, I always wondered, like I'd fly with when I first got into business, sometimes you end up flying months with the same guy or 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 gal, right? And so 
a lot of people do the same thing over and over again. And I would always sit there and go, man, I, I don't know. This is canned. Why do you keep saying the same thing? Until you start doing it and you try and go off script a bit and you just end up going down a rabbit hole. <laughs> And then you're in Davy Jones' locker and you're getting spun down right. into the bottom and you right. just go okay. off and you sound like a complete uh, person that you probably wouldn't want to be in the back of an airplane with. So you say the same thing and I keep it really, I always thank the people for giving us the privilege to take them wherever we're going. Uh, let them know about the ride, the seatbelt sign. Uh, they know about the weather, but, uh, and everybody wants to know how long the flight's going to be. So just cut, touch on the basics and just let them know how appreciative you are that they're with you and um, they're part of your family, right? For whatever amount of time you have them with you. And so that's it. I don't, I varied a couple of times and I, I put, I, I mean, I just basically had to stop. <laughs> we, we call it uh, Elliot and I, Darren Elliott, uh, former NHL goalie. Uh, when we do the games together, uh, we call it getting uh, stuck in the cul-de-sac and you can't get out. And you can just keep going around and around and around and you're yeah. looking for that exit uh, That's when, awesome. when you try to do it. Yeah, do you, uh, exactly. you know what you should you know what you should do, Jeff? Uh, you should you should just go on every like half an hour and go not far now. <laughs> yeah. I that, try that to keep it good. to a minimum. You're not going to hear from me. Mount Rainier's on the left hand side or the Grand Canyon's down below us. Because people in the back now, back in the day, that used to be really cool. And it is cool to check out the Grand Canyon and the Rockies and and whatever else, you know. But people are in the back. They're on their phone. They're watching a movie. They're listening to music. So they don't want to be interrupted, right? And so uh, nice and mundane is the way we like to keep it and very quiet, which is not how I normally live my life outside aviation. <laughs> but we steal I some of uh, Lord Bag's jokes and, and crack those. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I I can't say I've ever uh I've maybe thought of Lord Bag, but I haven't said anything that might come out of his mouth between uh seven and eleven thirty on a Friday or Saturday night. Because uh <laughs> that would, that'd be the yeah, end of it. I, I'd be asking you, Millard, if I could come on uh more often because I'd be on the unemployment line. Do I really uh, have to put my phone in airplane mode? I love you this know what? That's way beyond beyond my pay grade. If you want to put an airplane, it's like an optional skate. If you want to skate, skate. If you don't want to skate, don't skate. So if you want to put it in airplane mode, put in airplane mode. If you don't want to put it in airplane mode, don't put it in airplane mode. But what do they tell you to do? Put it on airplane mode. Oh, well, okay. There, there you go. I mean, but you're not really good oh at listening god. and following direction, are you? So, oh my you, god, I love the turn of this. Just it's above my pay grade, and then he just gets mad at you. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he's sour with me. Right now. <laughs> you, yeah, I'm it's just, just uh, you, you put it on. You put it on airplane mode so your battery doesn't drain. So it's not just looking for a tower oh, the whole time. Oh, and then when idea. you you know go yeah. to press something, you don't drop the landing gear on them, you know, or whatever. That's I mean, you're talking about interference too, right? But nowadays... Does it really interfere? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes people thought they could interfere with the airplane systems. I don't know. I mean, they're plugging into the airplane. They're getting power. They get the way Boeing makes things, it'll probably just take three planes out of the sky if you turn it on. Like, not even yours. <laughs> it'll just affect others. <laughs> Hey, I want to happen. About... That's what happened over over Australia. Somebody turned on their phone and dropped a plane. <laughs> and dropped the plane. How, how far down would that plane have dropped? Like to to cause somebody to be on the roof, pinned to the roof, yeah, the ceiling. I, you know what? I don't know a lot about that particular situation, but obviously something uh, uh, severe happened when you're putting people on the roofs. Now you can get what they call a PAT, which is clear air turbulence which can, you know, the sky's clear in a million. You're at 36,000 feet and everything's going great. And all of a sudden, there's a change in the jet stream, the temperature change, something, and all, all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose and the airplane uh, gets into moderate to severe turbulence. You never saw it coming. Obviously, in this situation, they never saw it coming. So we'll have to wait and see what happened. But um, very traumatic for everyone involved in uh, – you know, the last thing you want to do is say, what is it doing now? Uh, but thank goodness they, they got everything under control and landed and hopefully everybody's okay. Do you think I wear my seatbelt all the time? Do you wear your hey, seatbelt, you, Lord Bag? 
Gas all the time. All the time. Hey, Jeff, like Jeff told me to. Jeff's like, always really? wear your seatbelt. Yeah. It's like when you go on the ice, you got to put a helmet on because you, you know what? You never know what's going to happen. And after the Aloha airplane that turned into a convertible back in the, yeah. what was that? The eighties. After that, I, as it, I was a, I was just a young whippersnapper. I was like, I don't, 32. I don't, 32 I'm wearing then. my seatbelt. I wear my seatbelt on the couch at home now. I was like, I'm not going anywhere. But, um, uh, Hey, I want to ch- I want to get back to you saying I'm angry at you. Let's talk about how angry you were at me and Eddie last night when we came up with the Jonathan Marshall show stat and you treated us like it was uh like we were a couple of kids that had just uh, gone and uh, thrown a rock at a car. No, it was just you. Okay. Yeah, it was. You know, it was. You know it was Aggie, just got mad, he'd take you out. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, so Lord Bag, let me ask you a question yeah. because you watched the game last night and you saw where do you think Marsha Show is in league's goal scoring? He's got 30. What, what position? In in league or on on uh, for the Golden Knights? No, no, in the league. Where See, does what he, he what he just did there was stalled for an answer? Because you I, were I would very say clear prob- with your question, and he just he he asked a question back so he could stall. No, actually, I asked it back because <laughs> as actually, actually he asked it. Blah, blah, blah. He asked the question, and I was like, "Oh, I seen stats on this yesterday, and I was mad because Petretti was on that." And I'm like, "How did he ever get that many goals? I seen that guy nothing but hit glass every time he shot. He shot so much, and it was just all over the place." Anyways, uh, I would say it's probably 15th in goals. Okay, and so Mallard came at me like a spider monkey last night after I said, it's an unbelievable season he's having. He's got to be minimum top 15. And Aggie says, you know what, Sharps, I I think maybe even top 10. And the next words out of Mallard's mouth is Austin Matthews and blah, 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 blah. And I, we so said, we're not he's saying he's number one. Yeah. yeah we're, not, we're not saying he's number one. Marsha show is seventh in the league in goal scoring. That's, that's surprising. Unbelievable. When's it actually the last surprised, time Golden Knight that surprises me too. Seventh in the league. Like Wild Bill at 43 his first year. Like this guy came out of nowhere, right? And he, all he's done is keep scoring big goal after big goal after big goal. And I just get dressed down by the host of the show last night because – Not I on wanted, the air. No, but off the air. And, and yeah. you were trying to hurt my feelings, but you didn't do it. But oh, we, we It's us. That's what we do. We we, we hold each other accountable. And I feelings. was wrong. And I was wrong. And I admit that I was off base with my projection. I that's didn't a, think that's 37 would be top 10 with all the scoring in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Pretty the thing. There's a lot though, of right? scoring, right? There's a lot of big yeah. – a lot of guys seem to have a lot big, of guys numbers, with big so. numbers. Yeah. Right now. Well – Mallard, where does he project now then after 37? 46. What, what, 46? On pace for 46. Man, that's amazing. Which would Just set three a new above. Golden Knights team record and would beat his own personal career best by 16. 16. 30, 30, right? He was he was 30. <laughs> yeah, 30. He Never talking. he was 30 a couple of times. That's so, pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. when and, you think and about not, it, and not flute, like not garbage goals. Not uh, not your the fourth goal in a seven two win. They're, they're huge goals, and and as Jeff Sharples pointed out last night on the broadcast, he's changed, and maybe this is why he's going to uh, approach a team record. He gets into that net area and scores a lot of his goals from there, and that's like that's Bruce Cassidy's influence. That one last night, he was mm-hmm. right around. What was he like? Just above the hash marks, right? And then just right, boom, yeah, right, yeah. So, yeah, nice goal. Um, yeah. I wanted. Did we talk about trades last week? One of the trades. No, trade ended on Friday. Let's talk about trades. Yes. Let's talk about yeah. trades. Um, how does? Let's first of all, do you think people should be mad at Las Vegas? The Vegas, sorry, instead of Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, do you think that people should be mad, but the way they're able to pull it off at the end? No, that's they're, they're not on. doing anything illegal. I oh, understand why why people would be sour because Vegas has become the villain of the league in the last uh, number of years, and then one uh, which ticks everybody off and makes people envious. But from a rule perspective, they have not broken anything uh, and not violated any of the 
stipulations in the National Hockey League. Listen, would, would Vegas rather acquire a couple of players and sit out their captain, or would they rather have their captain and pass on the traits? They would rather uh, have their captain. Well, I, right? I, I when, 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 you're, when you're talking to me like this, Mr. Millard, yes. I don't think that they're they're pulling anything off, and I don't think he's he's not hurt. And I think the spleen is something you have to be careful with, and he should take extra games to make sure he's okay. I just feel people get all upset. But if your team's not willing to swing swing for the fences or cheat a little bit, they're not actually trying, right? Isn't that what they say? If you're not cheating, you're not well, trying. You also have to have an owner that's willing to spend. And you've got the salary cap that's $84 million. Mm-hmm. And when you bring in these players uh, uh, that uh, that can backfill for a player that's on long-term disability uh, injury reserve uh, – you're adding to your payroll. So your payroll is going up and Bill Foley is willing to put out another $15 million above the 80, 84 or whatever the number is. And he, that, that's a, that's a big commitment by your owner as well. Well, and I heard we've talked about this before. Um, Vegas, excuse me, to me has and, and Lord bag, you, you know, people are like, Oh, Vegas, Vegas. Well, this is where I live, and we're out in the West Coast, and we watch the Kings, we watch Canucks, we watch a lot of the Western Conference teams, a little bit more than the East. But Vegas but, is your team. No, but, I mean, I was originally Detroit, so I'm a big fan of what they're doing out there, too, and the way they did it uh, when Kenny Holland was there, and now Stevie is there, and they're, they're building it. Vegas is a little different animal. First of all, since the Gretzky trade, biggest thing to come into the league. Gretzky was a singular right? A player and Marty went with him and there was trade, you know, Carson and these other guys go back to Edmonton. When you're talking about a team, I don't know if there's a bigger story in the league since almost its inception than Vegas. And everyone loved it in the first year, but they've just done things differently. That's just the way they are. The other thing people have to realize about what's going on here in Vegas is last weekend, there was Madonna, U2 and NASCAR here. Okay, on a given night, there's 150 to 160,000 tickets for entertainment available in this town. And two weekends ago, part of that 150,000 was Lord Bag with his three show mm-hmm. sold out shows at Wise I Guys. Was, I was at one at, down at Main Street, which Mallard and his lovely wife Jen came down and, and joined us. So, what I'm saying is the only other city in the league that I can think of, and there, these are there's massive cities that maybe has to compete on a nightly basis with all this other stuff might be New York, right? The Rangers, but they're way more established than Vegas is. So you have to be competitive. You have to be aggressive. Tip of the hat to Mr. Foley, because he'll spend the money and a tip of the hat to George McPhee and Kelly McCrimmon, because they have been super aggressive. And if you're a fan of another team, wouldn't you like to see your upper management try and build and be as, as aggressive in your market as you could. There's a few other factors. I think that, I mean, these guys want to win. That's number one. But I think the other factor is you to stay relevant in the Vegas market. There's your, there's, there's there it your is. word right there. In order to stay relevant, doesn't matter what, what town you're in, you have to win. And yeah. I think, I think these teams are learning that they can't cry if they're not, not being relevant. You know what team did that this year? Winnipeg. Winnipeg was str- struggled for a couple of years and people weren't going to the game. So they started to win again and people are going to the games and their, their trades help them win. Right. They, they, they swung well, for the fences. They, uh, they missed their season ticket selling window last year when they left the playoffs. And there was a lot of negativity. The coach was called out by the players. The the coach called out the players. And uh, there's a lot of question marks about the future of some players and the negativity around the marketplace uh, caused the season ticket window to be very unsuccessful because uh, teams right. sell their their season tickets right after the, the the Stanley Cup playoffs or during the Stanley Cup playoffs, and uh, and that didn't go over very well. And even though they signed Hellebuck and they uh, extended Shifley uh, just prior to training camp and got off to a great start, they the ticket uh, window, the season ticket uh, base had dropped so much that they've been playing catch up all year. Now they've had a a great season and they're now starting to get the walk-up crowd going. Uh, Rewards. They're starting to reap the rewards. Right. But they, they missed 
probably three quarters of the season, uh, they had to deal with what happened last summer. And uh, and they won't really benefit uh, on this season until until next fall. To be to be perfectly honest, yeah, but, financially but, at the gate. But I think they're I think they're one of those teams that realized with the struggle that, that yeah. they just they just couldn't play along the same lines, right? They got to yeah. keep going. The, they, the two and, signings, and, and, uh, Shifley and Hellebuck, were were exact an example of that. Yeah, but don't and, you guys think? They, they should have done it earlier, but you can't. They yes. couldn't do those. They couldn't. They yeah. What whatever. What I, they had you gotta of... you gotta make your team relevant against anything yeah. else that's going on in your city. But right? that started beforehand, and you know, like what we saw towards the end of last season, and like Mallard says, as they go into this season, this started with Winnipeg well before then, with Paul Maurice leaving at Christmas uh, last year, right? So. And so, you know, the un, the unsettled of the organization, uh, you know, it was unsettled in the organization before that. Chevy's done an unbelievable job. Their GM, uh, Kevin Shovel Day off of putting it together. But then there's another thing that says no such thing as bad press, but you're having a season where you might win the President's Trophy. Your, your team is stout. You've got one of the top goaltenders in the league, best goaltending coach in the league, right? In flats. <laughs> Where's he from? You know, yeah, well, I, you know what? Thornhill. He's from Thornhill. That, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, Thornhill, Ontario? No. Thornhill, <laughs> British Columbia, the outskirts of Terrace, British Columbia, or I guess the bedroom community. But one of the things about Winnipeg is they got all this stuff that's starting to, all this momentum starting to go their way. And then the owner goes on, well, you know, if things don't pick up, we might have to, we might have to move. Yeah. And well, if you're in that market, you're like, are you kidding me? You're saying that? Um, to me, I thought the timing was a little bit. Uh, that was a little uh, taken out of context a bit. Yeah, it, it was. But you know what? People say they, they got a lot matter, of positives going there. It doesn't matter right? what you're doing. People say things and and, and they regret, regret saying them. But nowadays they are found instantly by the Internet and played all over the place. Mm -hmm. So you really have to watch yourself when you are a business or whatever. You know, with what you're saying, if those words can affect you, right? So yeah, it very everyone's like a hair trigger now, right? And up there, I think people are like, "Hey, listen, you'll hear it. You hear it everywhere. Oh, the tickets cost too much." Well, when we're pay when people are getting paid eight to ten million dollars a year, they got to find that revenue somewhere else because they don't have the TV contract like you will with the NFL, Major League Baseball, or or the PGA Tour or the Premiership type thing where you get all that TV money. So uh, uh, Winnipeg's a great story. I, and I think now that they're focused back on the ice. Did like well at the said, deadline too. Did well at the deadline, great. yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know who didn't do well at the deadline? I think was Pittsburgh. Oh. That's it. Just put it out there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I have some some... <laughs> Stronger okay. thoughts about uh, uh, about what's happened there and the decision that they made last summer and didn't agree with it then and I I, I think what decision was that? Of, uh, bringing in like doubling down and bringing in uh, EK sixty five uh, our buddy Eric. I thought Carl. that was I thought it was stupid. I thought that was completely stupid. Like, yeah. uh, I, I didn't I, agree I, with that then and and uh, trying to keep the window Santa's open. Agent. Yeah, and they they took a. a Difficult situation and made it almost unmanageable. And now they're in a massive bind. And I don't know how you do what you did last summer and say what you did last summer, uh, committing to the core, and then now turn around and try to tear it down. So they, they're they in a very unenviable position. I hey, think do you uh, remember... Sorry, when buddy. I said EK65 and you chirped me for saying that, but you drop it like you guys are best buddies and you're going to spend Christmas together. What do you, what do, we do? Yeah, Mallard, remember? Mark, you said, well, how can you just throw these nicknames out there? I don't like, remember you, know, you so saying now, about EK65. Yeah, you did. Uh, I'm playing the tape back. We're going to put it on here. Brian will find it. But I was going to, uh, I was looking for a picture. Uh, it's out in the hallway uh, of, of EK and I. That's it's funny. His it's buddy. above the fireplace. Um, it is. I got one out here. It's 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 <laughs> awesome. I, he's a he's a fun guy, and I love him. I just I don't know yeah. why they why they felt the need to do that. But don't you think they also by re-signing Malkin, who um, is you know on it's the back of a great career, they 
they tried to get the band back together again, but they they don't have the instruments. You know, they got like a uh, half a drum set and electric guitar with uh, two strings on it. It seems like I I, I can't because, believe because, how bad because the this equipment's team is. old. That's yeah, why I can't I can't believe how bad this team is. Yeah, it's time and to get I, new drums. It's time to get new guitars. Yeah. What do you I, guys think? Like Sidney Crosby, does he get moved out of there? Why like, wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? LA why wouldn't you? Rangers? Why wouldn't you build for the future by by doing a Wayne Gretzky huge move? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, you're gonna. It's gonna be upset people for a, for a year and a half. But let's be honest, it's happened before. You got to do it. You can't be scared. The I place, if you're not agree if you're not you. if you're not swimming, you're going backwards. Yeah the the idea of spending your entire career or a player spending their entire career with the same organization is romantic at best. Uh, that that's it. The it, the other part is winning uh, and giving yourself an opportunity to take another swing at it. And we we will be sad for the first twenty minutes after Sydney's traded or if Sydney's traded. But then you'll you'll figure it out and you'll get used to it and and you'll you'll move along. Uh, I I don't know why he wouldn't want to do it. Well, also, why, wouldn't you want to just lose with all with a, a young core rather than your old core? Like either way, you're losing. Why not lose for the future? He can. It's the old saying, right? We're losing with you. We can lose without you. They are in line for a lottery pick now. They're probably you know you're looking at. Anaheim and San Jose most likely to get that. Mm -hmm. um, but that is exactly it. You're, you, they could end up with a lottery pick. They're going to eat, be get inside the top 10. How about, and, and people might say, well, why are you trying to send them to LA or New York? You know, how, how would he look with the Blackhawks? Like how would he look with, with Connor Bedard on his wing? Uh, or the, and you can go any place you want. Sidney Crosby. Columbus. Could you imagine he gets traded to Columbus, what it would do to that I mean, they're already right at the top of the Western Conference. Um, yes. They're perennially contending. What? Where did, <laughs> he just walks out of the room now. Where does he now. go? Like he walks I, through the The logo. dogs are barking, I guess. Uh, Lou, oh, is that what it is? Lou doesn't like it. when he Lou hears me. He's like, okay, either here's, we got to go a, for a walk or you got to stop talking to here's him. Here's a pop quiz for you. Where, where do you think, without looking, where are the Penguins in the league overall standings. I was looking Ooh. at this this morning and I was like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't think that. I'm going to say 26, 27, somewhere in there. If I have to go, I'll, I'll go with 27. What about 25th. 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 They're 25. So you're, you're, Hello. you're, you're a good, job. good lot, lottery pick. You you guys are, are more on the money than I. I thought they were closer uh, to uh, twenty uh, in and around there, but uh, no, they've had too many. They've had too many. Uh, close. They've had too many um, like series of losses, like just losses in a row to be around there. You know, like, it isn't. It isn't here and there. They just go on this bender where they don't lose. They don't win for like seven games. It's pretty crazy. Um, do, does he, does Sullivan too. survive? Uh, I think uh, Mike has his pick of any job that he wants that either is open with an interim head coach or is going to be open. And I would not be shocked if Mike Sullivan follows the example of Peter Laviolette and just agrees to leave uh, the way Laviolette did with Washington and, and finds another job. Interesting. Like Very Berube interesting. and, and, and Mike Sullivan would be your your two massive uh, coaches that are being chased. Or well, how about chased. Todd McClellan? Would you throw him in there, Mallard? Yeah, Todd's uh, Todd's probably uh, third on that list, just uh, based on on what's happened uh, in in Los Angeles. Um, had had a better team than than the other two guys. Um, hasn't had uh, the success that the other two guys have had in 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 winning. So uh, I've I, like Todd's Todd's a great coach, and uh, if I'm Todd, I'm sitting back and I'm enjoying my five billion dollars too. Does he got two hey. years on that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a, a guy I I always think about. I was really enjoyed interacting with him. Uh, 
which was once in a blue moon, but it, it seemed like the players loved him. And I know with was Quenville. Do you see him, Do you see an avenue for him to be back in yeah. the league at all? Yeah. Because I really? mean, every time How I many, think of a, it's got to be soon needs, though, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, th- there'll be noise when he does come back, but uh, uh, and and there was news from Chicago, uh, their accusation. Uh, in the last few months, which I'm I'm sure doesn't help uh, the idea of of Joel applying for reinstatement, but yeah, I I think Joel is back, and when Joel's back, he'll he'll be, he'll be hired. That that that's the flat out uh, reality of it. Who would you see you... him going? Where would you see him going? Well, I thought uh, I thought Calgary was a very uh, presentable position for him before they hired Ryan Huska. I thought that was uh, a good uh, fit for him, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see uh, who has openings uh, coming up. But uh, you, you be. Uh, How about San Jose? Does San Jose? No, when he's when he's fine there, and they're 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 not going to be competing for anything anyway. But don't you have? To, but don't, we're talking about we're talking about making money, right? We're talking about making money and having your team relevant. What does San Jose yeah. do? Because they they are a team that has lost a lot of people sitting in the stands. They have definitely, if they were in Winnipeg, they'd already be in the trucks moving someplace right now because the the, the amount of people that are not going to games there, um, and that is an expensive market. And that that is a San Francisco market, and it sh- you should be relevant in there. You got it. You got so much to compete with. You got to really try hard. If they're what do they have relevant, to do? They shouldn't have traded Tomas Hurdle, but they realize that they're not going to be competitive for a while, and they saved a, a, a bunch of money. So they're not they're not even trying to be relevant. They're trying to just tear it right down. So you they, think- they're, they're not going to be relevant for a while. How many teams this? How many teams in the league this year can tear right down? In in the league that can afford to. Yep. Oh, can Pittsburgh afford to? No, uh, Pittsburgh is an interesting market because when they're not winning, when they don't have the stars, we've seen it in the past like twice, where mm-hmm. where they've uh, had serious financial difficulty. Um, that I'm fascinated to see what's going to happen whether that market has matured to the point that, that they will stick with their team and stand by a team that uh, an organization that's been very I'm successful. Gonna inter- I'm going to interrupt you on this. The last the two times before, they didn't have an ownership that could afford to tear down. Can they right. afford to tear down now? Like with that new They ownership. should be able to with Fenway. Right. Uh, yeah. Sports group. They should. But uh, it's also fan support. Like will, will fans still somewhat – fill the building to 75 percent or or in in that area i don't know which is which is weird because they'll still fill they'll still fill the football team when they are below average you know what eight, i mean eight like they'll, games though yeah they, yeah they play internet but here's the thing too yeah a million LB. people a game though come on everybody get get involved yeah well but you know what people spend you know people move to cities because of an nfl team i mean there's just a, a different way that the that the nfl's looked at you know, and, and you think about it, I was just talking to our, our statistician this morning, Mr. Morton, um, and mm. he brought up a great yeah. point about Pittsburgh. They were on their way out the second time, but they, you know, Mario helped save it, and then they were in trouble again. And then they got the first overall pick, which was Sidney Crosby, and then they were able to get the money. Mario was able to get the money. Uh, was it, I think it was Burkle that came in and helped get this team set up again. And now it's been, what? How long has Sid been in the league? 16, 17, 18 years. So they yeah, they've had some money in Pittsburgh. He might be close to 20. Yeah, I, I like, I'm gonna I like guess that, around that, you 18. guys nail it. The, the fact checker is gonna have fun with this one. 16, 17, 18, 20. Yeah. Well, hey. There's gotta be a right answer in there somewhere. Generally, okay. I'm gonna go way different. I'm gonna go way different than Jeff from now on. 32 years. He's been in there for 32 years. <laughs> been in the league for 32 years. Yeah. He, he he came in when he was six. Isn't um, he a thirty-nine year old man? Well, two thousand six was uh, the lost year, and two thousand four or five. Two thousand six was Edmonton, Edmonton, Carolina, right? In the uh, in the Stanley Cup. I don't know. I'm not a statistician. Yeah, that's good. 
So yeah. um, <laughs> it was it was right before that, and then Sydney was in the Memorial Cup, and then was drafted after that. Okay, but you could That's you could throw years. an answer in there. Good Mel, night, not, good night, not ladies judges. and gentlemen. <laughs> I was just doing some. I was backtracking to give you the answer. That said, I love, uh, I love the way our yeah. brains all work in different ways. Yes. You, you have two teams for your years. Jeff just, uh, well, I was learning to fly this time, and I'm just like, <laughs> so it's it's really good. Hey, I um, love it. Did you uh, hockey? Did you guys yeah. ever? Uh, I'm I'm going to ask you a question. Do you guys ever have a fight, the two of you? Like ever with each other? Yeah. No. About what? Why are you going to try to start one? Just just have a like a dispute. Or any time of Jeff rolls his eyes. Has he rolled his eyes at you? That's that's how he just does this thing with his eyes where he rolls his eyes and you mm-hmm. basically know you've been told to fuck off. Because <laughs> Detroit, you guys know Detroit's going in a in a bad way right now. Uh, what? At, at like practice. the city? No, uh, the Red Wings. <laughs> uh they won six in a row, now they've lost six in a row and got uh-huh. humbled by by Buffalo. At practice today, Ben Sherratt and Lucas Raymond took out their frustrations on each other. Had oh, separated. Geez. Yeah, nasty. Well, that I, that's I, not going like to go really well. I, I actually like it. I think it it it's good for the team. It shows some fight, and the coaches uh, will love it. But, and and it shows everybody that there's some engagement there, and then they're not going to hate each other. Yeah, but other. what if it's about some? I, I I hate to say this, but what if it's about something off ice? Like what if you? What if oh, this this, what if, this was on ice. It was a battle drill that they were doing. Okay, that's the, that's different. Yeah, that happens. Well, there's there's been some off ice stuff where where that's happened. Yeah. Yeah, but didn't that happen in St. Louis a few years ago when they won the cup? It was Sanford and Bertuzzo yeah, they, got yeah, tangled but, up, and at, it could be one sided, like because Bertuzzo is a tough kid. Not Sanford, not really known for that. Same thing with Sherratt and Raymond. You got to be careful there. Like I, 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 I respect Raymond for sticking his nose in there against Sherratt, and uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> you know, Raymond could get injured. Uh, Sherratt's a pretty tough cu- customer. But the difference is they did it in December with St. Louis. You're already out of the playoffs in, in, in Detroit, and you're like, let's let's really rebound. Let's do a St. Louis thing. But they, they're out, right? They're already out, aren't they? Well, they're right there. They're on they're the They're right bubble. there. Yeah. They're on the bubble. Give me the bubble. I can't like, believe you got the, you got the Pittsburgh. You nailed the Pittsburgh uh, placing, but yeah. you've, you've – Sack Detroit, and there you know why? Because right because Jeff talks about Detroit, and I blank it out a lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was good. It was good. Uh, it was a good kerfuffle this morning. Really? Yeah. Where like, were they? What's on, the... Not a full on like fight or anything, and teammates got involved pretty quickly. But it was uh, it was a battle. And the coaches just sat back and watched. I, I didn't see long, any coaches back and watch. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah I love player, that. Players police themselves there. Let them do it. Let them do it. Like, it uh, let them like watch figure them. it out. Who do Jeff they play and I, next on the other hand, G- Jeff and I, on the other hand, have lots of fights. Do you guys? Do you guys argue a lot during? Yeah, we beat each other. Look at look. I'm not even playing along. He's like, no, we yeah. don't. We're really well, good friends. You know what? I, we chirp each other all the time. So I don't know how you look at that. But then we, what we do do is you guys uh, are both come babies. Together. You both burp each other all the time. <laughs> exactly. Before we go on the ice together, because we're on the ice uh, a fair amount together. And we connect on the ice because we, we were there for the kids. We help to do the best we can to help the kids out. So we chirp each other away. But when it it's like when it's for the kids, then we put our differences <laughs> aside. <laughs> Just like Lauren Pag was out with the kids the other day. That was uh, great when he was helping was... you in your your uh, your coaching session. It he was... had he had nothing but free stuff on. It was from every <laughs> National Hockey League team. Like there was something from all yeah. thirty two teams that he was wearing. And it was mm-hmm. all free. And I support every minute of that. And yeah. his helmet, his helmet was an LA Kings helmet with a busted chin strap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jeff's all like, you got to get a chin strap on that. And I'm like, it's broken. I can't use it. And he's like, you're crazy. You might fall down and hit your chin. He's very, he's all about safety <laughs> since he became yeah. a pilot. Before he went, he just played hockey. He just, he just shoot pucks at you trying to break your blades. <laughs> And now, now he's all like, tripping you. Careful. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Do you guys ever, I'll never forget that. We would go out for practice and everyone would be skiing around. Nice, calm before practice, some guys shooting pucks. And then guys wouldn't slap the puck because you could hear someone slap it. Yeah. But they'd wrist it as hard as they could down the other end and try and hit you in the blades. Right the guys would be turning. Yeah. Whoop, they'd go over. 
<laughs> and then guys would get all heated at each other. So we used to rip pucks at each other, but we'd always shoot end to end because as the guys turning, like we don't usually all teams go out and they go around left to right. And then, so they'd be turning down at the far end. And so you'd wire one from the far end and then you'd get in behind somebody like Proby yeah. or Joey Koser. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you take down like Spuddy, take down Galant, like take down uh, our old buddy Spuddy, uh, Gerard Galant, or, you know, I wouldn't normally shoot him at Spuddy, but I'd, I'd shoot him at, at like Doug Huda or, or Rick Zombo, and they'd shoot him back at me, and then you know, I'd get in behind the tough guys. You know, he and, didn't and mention. They'd look down. Well, they, sometimes you'd wipe them out. But well, what you didn't mention Eisenman. You didn't. You didn't hit Eisenman. No, no, I never did that to Stevie. No way, not a chance. <laughs> Here, and just what? He's untouchable, boy. You didn't do any. And and the other thing is, he if he didn't come over and break a stick over your head, he he was a pretty That's tough funny. guy. So he, he'd he'd take you out. So you didn't you didn't screw with Stevie. He was the he was the franchise. Kind of like I Sid to, the Kid is in Pittsburgh. So. I have to bring this up. I, this is not hockey related, but I got to bring it up. And you're talking about doing things and getting away with things. Carrie Ann did the smartest thing I've ever seen. So she got she got out of bed like just at the last minute yesterday and went and got her photo taken for her license. And and the and the lady at the at the license place said, "Your hair is a mess," and tried to fix it for her. She looks like she's drunk in the photo, right? It's so smart because now she'll never get a DUI because <laughs> right. she just looks drunk. <laughs> It's pretty good. It has, I, I'm just like, oh, you are brilliant. <laughs> just like, hey, <laughs> was it secretly on purpose? Yeah, and I wasn't on purpose at all. She just for she was busy doing something, and she, and she was like, I got there and on there, and I looked crazy. That was crazy, and they tried to fix my hair. And I the love lady the fact said, that the DMV is trying to fix her hair. The DMV was like, you don't look right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what they see at the DMV too? <laughs> yeah, hey, you're like, uh, I can't believe Long Beach police didn't show up at the house. <laughs> Excuse me, Mister Bag, can we have a word with you? <laughs> she, they make her take a breathalyzer before they take her before photo. the picture. <laughs> yeah, I just wonder that. Uh, uh, woo, her. But she's uh, got the best hair in the league too. So I it, it must. I can only it, imagine. It was. It was. It was. Uh, have you seen the picture? Yet? I have not yet. She's just like, it's crazy. I'm going to have to do it again. So, uh, pretty great. Hey, uh, you know, if the DMV is trying to help you out, you did a good yeah, job. Yeah, they never help you out. So, if they're trying no. to help you out, they're like, no. well, we've never seen this before. Can you work that into a bit? Uh, I'm going to probably, yeah, probably try to figure out something with it. Uh, my wife's the smartest person in the world. There's a guy that's on the Daily Show, Michael Costa. And he used to go get his license, his picture taken, and he'd wear a, a white shirt with a black collar underneath. So he so he looked like a priest. No. <laughs> really? Yeah. He said and That's if awesome. he got pulled over, people would he'd get away all the time. So That's smart. Yeah. Pretty, I know what I'm brilliant. doing. Oh yeah, go get get hammered and let your hair fly. That's that's the best way to take your picture taken. <laughs> you can get away with it there. All right, you're fine. Uh, I love it. Um, it great. Do you think? Do you think a team that's got to become relevant and is struggling to, if they don't become relevant soon, they might get turned on as Montreal. I think I think they're trending in the right direction. You I do. They, they've got their draft picks and they've got okay their their core and they've got their coach and they've got their management structure in order that uh, is all stable. I, I like You're the direction they're going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You think well, that coach okay. survives? If he wants to, I, I I think he's he's a coach and management likes him. The the, the players uh, like him. Uh, I I just wonder whether or not he wants to do it because he he came with no experience. He wasn't a career coach coming in. Uh, if he wants to keep doing it, it'll it'll keep going. If Marty wants to keep going, he'll keep he'll keep coaching there. Do you think? Yeah, but do, you we, think they need, do, do you think they need to change your logo? Anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you imagine? For you. We're going to do a logo change. <laughs> was it Trent McCleary that cut the uh, the puck in the throat? Was it McCleary? Uh, With the Canadians? Mm, yeah. Way back. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, he, I think he did have a pretty significant injury with yeah. them. So the, uh, the, the story was uh, that uh, Dr. Mulder, uh, the, their, their team doctor, legendary uh, doctor, 
came out and they had to uh, cut get his equipment off. And they cut up the jersey and then around the crest <laughs> and then uh, up yeah. the jersey. And and the wise tale was that you don't cut through the crest uh, to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, it. It was it was legendary how this this player is having like uh, mm-hmm. uh, a serious medical situation. With after take a puck to the throat and the larynx crushed and uh, facing a life threatening situation, and they took the time to cut around the crest because it was Montreal. Do you but think, in actuality, it's the crest is so thick? Yes, I would you yeah, try yeah. and cut, cut through it. But but the uh, the the uh, the theory was or out there uh, on hockey uh, people was you don't cut through the Montreal Canadiens crest. <laughs> hey, but yeah. Mallard, think Let about that. Let him die. Yeah. You, yeah. I'll tell you what, you never let it, your uniform, you never let that crest hit the ground. No. Like but you that's didn't, little... you didn't just throw it in the bin because there's a bin they bring no, in. I agree. The game. And that, and that's sort of what, what precipitates this, this theory that they would cut around the yeah. crest is you don't step on the logo if nope. it's on the, on the floor. Like the different dressing rooms would have logos on the, on the carpet in the dressing room. You were never allowed to step on it. Uh, your your sweaters. But people, never hit the but floor. normal people didn't know. Don't, normal people don't know, and they come into the dressing room and step all over it, and then and people get, get all upset. Yeah. So, but now, so most of the teams have moved it to the roof, or they put when people come in, they have a carpet that goes over top of the logo, so the yes. logo is covered. It always uh, baffled me in Stanley Cup Finals over the years. You would have teams with the logo on the floor, and they would have to put like the uh the velvet ropes around it so people didn't step on no it. way and then and then it, you would mm-hmm. have no room in the dressing room after that yeah. because the logo took yeah. so much room and then it was just chaos I, and then i would get yelled at by some like the equipment manager would yell at me because i was half on the logo and get off the and, logo yeah you yeah, know what they, like, they, well, they, they should put the owner the in a chair though. They should put the owner in a chair in the logo with the with the with the velvet ropes around him. Yes, yes, <laughs> that'd be that great. You, you got to do something fun with it. Oh, and, and look it. at look, Sharples is sour with us because we're making fun of yeah mystery oh, guys, logos. The logo is no, I, Well, I'll tell you what you you didn't matter where I played, um, you didn't you, that uniform practice jersey game jersey you never hit the floor and you never went near that logo and no. in Detroit the logo was on the floor. Uh, and so you just walked around it. Like it was almost like you could have gone in there and uh, with radar and just, just worked your way around the room because you knew, yeah, that, that's good. So until you get traded, I'm, then you just I, walk right he's across okay it. And, what's that? And if you like to get traded, you just walk right across it. See ya, suckers. <laughs> well, you see it all the time when people celebrate on the logo. Uh, you know, in the NFL, other yeah. teams lose their mind, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good thing, you know, show some respect and take care of your stuff. I think is more than anything. Don't, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. so are our teams at home allowed to go up the middle through the neutral zone or do they have to skate around (laughs) the logo at center ice? Well, we're talking about celebrations Mallard, but you know that 85% of an NHL game is played within three feet of the board. So it's not like they really have to worry about it all that much anyways. When's the last time you saw someone celebrate a goal on some other team's logo? Right? I think you just made That's funny. 85%. Just skate back. Just skate back to the center ice and just start. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Put your stick down. Yeah. Just like a flag. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you change? Did you, did you correct me on my percentage there? I just wondered where you got the 85%. He's been throwing this around for years. Yeah, I, I just threw it out there. It, it felt yeah. like a good number. It feels good saying it. So I just was like, meh. I mean, I could give you six feet if you want. It's still 85%. I'm going to say this right now. This show isn't about facts. <laughs> Who is the fact hey, checker? Have you guys hired a fact uh, checker? Randy Morton is. He, he just he, yeah. he, he sends he's, a text message and laughs at us. Fact yeah. Checker. Okay. yeah, Randy he's came in to today. Yeah. That's where I got the Sidney Crosby thing. Saved the franchise with Mario. Is Randy so, there right now? Like off no. camera? No, if he I keep trying to get him on, but he's not here today. I did talk to him this morning. That's where I got that stat. So we were talking about we the game last a, night and the fabulous pregame we did. The best yes. ever. Yeah, we should have him just do a video that, every week. He we should just are, send a video with an information. I agree with that. Uh we yeah. uh, our pregame show last night, we had technical difficulties. We did two blocks uh that actually weren't on the air. 
And then they said, well, it's not going to get fixed. So they didn't even make us do the last half of the show. But we really? were really good. We were yeah. really good. You know what the problem yeah. is? You guys are doing it in a happy birthday room at a rink. That's the yes, problem. It, it, it is a smaller room. You stole that from me. I told you that. It used yeah, to be like, still, I stole it from you. Totally. Yeah. You told me. That's not uh, stealing. You told me. <laughs> but it's a, it's a full studio now. And, and the, the, the problem wasn't there. It was in Clearwater, Florida. Where they had to flip a switch. Yeah. The Scientologists. The on off. Yeah, flip. that's yes. what happened. <laughs> Scientologists were like, we're not, we're not allowing this pregame show tonight. Nope. But Don't like you know, guys. the other thing is when the last time Lord Bag was in the room, Mallard basically had to babysit him because he was trying to stick his foot out to see if he could, how far he could put his foot out to get it on camera. <laughs> were you I doing Jeff? I was telling Jeff, I was just like, nah, 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 push I like a that. five-year-old. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. Oh, you do? That's awesome. Yeah. I was doing it or like, or if somebody's like doing a radio, if somebody's doing a radio interview uh, around me, like say uh -huh. uh, Shane Knight, he's doing uh, something for NHL Network Radio, I'll write him a note saying, "Hey, I'll give you two dollars if you say my name." And no way. Uh, have him try and fit my name in. I'm, a t I'm Lord Bag, and I, uh, I, I appreciate what you did there. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah, we're we 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 we're from the same cloth. I yeah. guarantee, I guarantee, I, uh, yeah, 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 you yeah, certainly yeah. are. Yeah, if you know what, give you two a microphone and you're the most squared away guys in the world, take it away, and it's a complete dumpster fire. That oh, would, no, no yeah. we're, we're normal when we have microphones, we fall apart when we don't. I think that's <laughs> what he said, isn't he? Yeah, yeah no, well, he, he said, no, he, he corrected me just like you always do. That's fine, but he does no, it said, a little differently. You do it with a little bit more little anger in there like you want to give oh, it to that me. Was last night. Just it was just one, I, I was, I was passionate, I think. I think when I treat you like that, it means that we've taken another stage of our relationship. Hey, you know what? You know what makes me laugh is people would follow you two to the end of the earth with you had a microphone in your hand, but it would have to be a cordless mic, right? Yes. <laughs> or, Once we got to the end with the one that's plugged into the wall, uh, that would be the end of it. We're, we're only going so far. We can only go to the end of the stage because this thing's going to unplug otherwise. I keep getting Let's... them tangled up. And then when we're at T-Mobile, I get them wrapped around my chair. I'm That's surprised they guys they give you guys uh because they spend so much money and then they just cheap out on the cords. So, eh, so I, I hey Mallard, does I gotta ask I you a question that. about this? Well um because I think where you guys where you do your show from in T Mobile is one of the coolest places I I've seen of all the NHL cities. Is there another place in this in the league? Or another, sh you know, team that you watch where they do the post pregame, post game intermission show, uh, similar to what you you do here in Vegas and T Mobile, Edmonton, Edmonton School, a, yeah. They have a, they have a suite at the end, uh, a little different than than us. Uh, Such a weird building that building. I, that, I, have you been in it? It's so cool. I, I like but, it. But it's it's got like the, the the owners got like an apartment building yes. instead of a box. It's so bizarre. Uh Harold Ballard. Uh, but that was like, that was just like a booth. Was, no, no, he that? no, he had he had a suite. He lived in Maple Leaf Gardens. He did really? Yes. So so the story is I can't remember the manager that got fired, but there so Harold Ballard fires uh the general manager and hires uh Gord Stellick had uh, to replace the youngest GM in NHL history. Gord moves into the GM's office and discovers that all of Harold's and uh, his wife's clothes are in there. Harold took the old general manager's office and made it a walk-in closet That's from, hilarious. From, from his apartment. And and Gordy had to work in, in the uh, in the main area as the That's GM. That's awesome. Yeah. As yeah, GM Har just Harold had a full-on apartment. He lived in Maple Leaf Gardens. Yeah. Well, the Edmonton guy's got to have a full-on apartment in that. that well, he's got well. Palm Springs. He's, got, he's billionaire. Yeah. So no, no. Colorado. Saying, but it, that, that's a that's an apartment in that yeah. in that place, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But yeah. so yeah. is yeah. Colorado, right? Is it Colorado guy lives there? Cronky really? Isn't yeah. Colorado he lives in the rink. Yeah, he's got a condo that is on the west side of the. It, it's part of uh, was Ball Arena now, right? Yeah. So he and no, I guess some sort of side, thing, he's right. got the view of the Rockies, right? But yeah, he's but he's got but, a but it's not like in the bowl, like. Yeah, I, no, I think it's you know. No, what? in Edmonton, it's in the it's yeah, in the bowl. No, yeah, it, I guess it wouldn't be in Colorado. Okay, but... Wh which one of us wouldn't take that? Like I'm, I think it's cool, and I'm. Jealous. I do love Zamboni fumes. I'm a I'm a big Zamboni fume guy. 
there's a chill in the air, but <laughs> you ever driven one? Oh, I've driven one. I've crashed one. Really? Yeah, I've hit the boards in Terrace with what the Zap Boy. <laughs> Can I ask you that before? Uh, you may have, sounds but familiar. I'm, yeah, it sounds good. familiar that, yeah, he's yeah. willing to talk about it again. So, yeah. no, I'm not. I don't want to bring it yeah. up. I don't need, I don't yeah. need that town coming after me. I knew there was a reason the pucks bounce different in that one corner. Uh, Thatcher Demko's out for two to four, two to four. Not... Yeah, don't With tell Ian problem, that right? they, it, it, the podcast just ended. This, this is over. I've got to call Thatcher and give him a two, good two to four get weeks. Well, Thatcher Demko. Yeah, he needed the break anyways. I think they just pretended he was injured and just said, hey, dismissed. Let's just, just cruise us into the uh, playoffs. Let's get going. Well, this and and Thatcher saw that like, from San Diego. I'm going to go surfing. It you opens surfing? up the gates. They play nine games in a row at home here, I think, starting tonight. Yes. Yeah, they so they're, the schedule is very favorable, and they've had a hell of a year. But this uh, could test them a little bit because they need things the test. go really well. Well, but here, think about it. You're expected to win at home. That's what the deal is, right? But if they kind of bump along at home and all of a sudden start losing at home, this could go the opposite way. But they've been pretty darn good this year. They haven't had too many uh, who's low points. Who who are they playing in the next nine games? Jeff Jeff knows there's nine games. He knows who they're playing. Who are they playing? Well, I'm gonna throw. Uh, they're gonna throw. I'm gonna throw Vegas in there. I you know what? Maybe that Western perennial contender Columbus will be there. Um, Ooh, but I know they play Vegas twice more before the end of the year, so I'm going to throw Vegas in on one of those ones, but it might not be till early gotta April. Be. Edmonton's got to be in there. Well, they, they beat Winnipeg to start. Time. They beat Winnipeg to start the uh, the homestand. Then they get Colorado, ooh, uh, Washington, Buffalo, Montreal, the Flames, L.A., Dallas, ooh. and Anaheim. That's just off the top of my head. That's really Dallas. good. Photograph Dallas memory. and. Dallas and and uh LA Anaheim. are the two toughs. They're the yeah, two tough so, teams. Yeah. So but they did they they one, really two. they they really when I went to the game in Los Angeles the other day, that it uh if LA is not on the top of their game, Vancouver can beat them. Four playoff teams out of uh out of nine. Yeah, they should be just and they already fine. won one of those games. Yeah. And if but, you think about the pace they play with, there's not a lot of teams who can play with that. They, they 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 bring it. They play with a lot of pace, Vancouver. And the Smith's been good for him. You just need him to be uh what NHL average, right? In there, and they should be just fine. What do you think? What do you think? Six and three on this, seven and two? Four and five. I, I, I would uh, I would take six and three and run. Yeah. Then that, that puts Edmonton in the rearview mirror. Edmonton's got three games in hand on them. Uh, and Edmonton's that. playing great. But you know what? The only thing is, is you they play Dallas, Colorado, Vegas twice, and Edmonton. Um, so I don't know who else is in there. Obviously, five and four. Some teams. I said four and five, but I think they go five. You're going to go five and four in a nine game homestand with the hottest team in the league over the course. They already of the have year? one win, so yeah, six yeah. and six okay. and three. I, I I agree with Mallard. I think six and three, possibly seven and two. Yeah, but you think six and three, you run. You, five and four might be more realistic, but six and three, you you and take that, put it in your pocket, and go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, is the teams don't like to have long home stands. No, oh, it's a bizarre schedule. It's crazy. It's and it's, so ter- you- it's bad for season ticket holders too, uh, to to yeah. have that many games in a row at home because yeah. yeah right absolutely yeah. right that's a what do you think? What do you think? There was there was that building being used for something where the Mormons having their annual meeting and they had to move out for six weeks. Isn't that wasn't that what Vancouver used to have to do? Remember? And then they had there was there. I think it was Jehovah Witnesses would come in and have their their British Columbia meeting at the at the Coliseum and they maybe have their to... their airplanes uh, in for maintenance. They they can't fly for <sighs> that's so funny. Month. Yeah, like it's basically a they, month. If they're yeah, using that's a Boeing, bad deal. They should start to train. Like and I think the guys get comfortable at home too. Like you don't want to be in at home very long, because uh, and if things start to go sideways, then you really you'd rather go out in the road, get everyone back together, you know, uh, try and figure it out from there. But and it Vancouver's is what it tough, is. And Vancouver's a tough place to be home for all that uh, that time because chances are you're going to get seven and a nine days are going to be rain. It's twenty two days at home, straight oh. days, twenty two days. 
That's bad scheduling. Like, I don't know yeah. how the league allows that. And, and whether the building, I mean, is is set up well, for the, the team, something else or not. I can't believe the team didn't uh, yeah. fight that. Because I've been yeah. part of teams that have had eight-game homestands, and they're chomping at the bit. To, the coach needs to – you just run out of things to do. Uh Players. Is that the longest? Is that the longest homestand? Do you guys know? Is that the longest it has homestand? To be. I, I, I I've never heard of anything longer than than nine. Eight well, was, and the other was thing the is one that I was aware of. When you're home that long, then you start kind of getting into your summer habits a little bit. Now I'm not saying the guy shouldn't go play golf or do some other stuff, um, you know, or go up to Whistler. Sounds like or, it. Well, I mean, speaking I, of I, long, gonna, speaking of long, yeah. we're in an Carrie hour. going to yell at you. No, we're in an hour and almost ten minutes. Oh right yeah, now. We should yeah. Probably go so soon. we should we should probably we should probably wrap this up and actually talk about hockey at some point. We we have talked a little hockey. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm good. Just, Let's just wrap it just up. Make it true. You want to just wrap it up, Jeff? Did you yeah. get mad? Did well, you, you just, just threw your, your eyes. It's your podcast. Yeah. I just oh, yeah. I just disrupted. He's just no. pretending like he's listening, but he's writing down his show notes for tomorrow's game with Calgary in Vegas. He's just bringing up things he doesn't want to talk about on his show because we've talked about, man, that sounds stupid. Hey, We're are you going to do radio show. today, Mallard? I'm going to do 20 minutes. Because okay, what time? The regular host is uh, off sick uh, as well now. So What's they, he, who's, who's got gonorrhea? I don't, I don't know. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Though, so they said, "Can you be back today?" I said, "No, no, I can give you twenty minutes, but uh, no, I can't be back today." Are you gonna are you gonna open up the show at four or what time yeah. are you going on? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll do the four to four twenty. Right on. Oh, yeah. it's you. Right You're on. the regular host. <laughs> well, no, the, the, it's, it's is it you? Regular. Well, I'm usually on it, but then the other, I'm usually on it with somebody else. But Who did I give person, gonorrhea to? Uh, Stan. Okay, yeah, he's always got it. Yeah, yeah, he probably gave it to you. He's probably he's, he's a gonorrhea giver. <laughs> we have billboards around here that that is uh, there. It's like a uncurable gonorrhea, like that are all over the place. I'm just like, what? My goodness, that you've sounds never had a problem. Have you? What's that? You've never had a problem, have you? I'm a Christian. <laughs> just like the when Sharples, Sharples wants to laugh, but he doesn't. I'm just eat. like <laughs> I'm like, sitting here listening laugh. to you donkeys, and I guess I'm like, okay, I got to uh, take the dogs to the vet. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna wrap he, it up. He's yeah. got to take the dogs to the vet, and go also he wants to keep HR bucks. out of his life. Yeah, uh, you know what? They, 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 HR probably just they turn us off immediately. They're like, oh, we we'll just push these guys off to the side. What hockey? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> We just got to be complimentary to the to the Kraken because we got a lot of company I, I work for a lot of Seattle Kraken fans. So that hurt. I like the last Kraken night, too. So that hurt them last that, night. Boy, yeah, I did. I thought, that that hurt. That was crazy. That's a dagger. Crazy finish. Uh, uh, well, yeah, it was a very crazy finish. Dallas there was came a back lot from three down sticks. last night. There was a lot of uh, a lot of comebacks. Oh, All good. right, Lord Bag. Um, let's go. You said you you said you're uh, spending fifteen hundred dollars at the vet today, so you're just getting their nails done. You already know what what it's going to cost. Nobody knows. I what don't it's know, cost but here's in. the thing: they need to get their shots, right? So you know how steroids. that goes. It's the like the time steroids. I went in to get their teeth done. They're like, "Oh, that's 150 bucks a dog." I'm like, "Okay." They got Yucker, the the special Molson. Okay, let's get their teeth done. And then they're like, they call me back. They go, "Well, how old is the dog or dogs?" And I go, "Well, they've been coming to you since 2013, so." Are they older than six? I said, yeah, we've been coming since 2013. So that's I think funny. they're a little older. Well, that's another 150 for blood work. And the next thing I know, I get home. I drop them off early, get there. And uh, they call me back. We've got good news and we've got bad news. And I'm like, just tell me my dogs are alive and I can handle it. And they go, yeah, they're both good. Uh, the one's down the other Why one would they ever up. say that? I know. I was like, you know what? Just tell me. Because the one I was worried about, which was the kokity, uh, <laughs> she was fine. Molson's got the, the bad chiclets. So they're like, well, we've got to take three teeth out. Well, we started off at 150 each, which is 300. I'm not real good with math. We ended up at like 1400, 1500 bucks. And I'm like, hey, listen, I got I said, here's this the dental special I came for. <laughs> this is kind of evaporated on me. So I'm not paying that. What can we do? Oh, we can wind it down. So we ended up getting them out of there for about 950. So today it's the fact three that sets you had to bargain with them is crazy. Good uh, for you, you know to bargain. You know what? It's the greatest uh, business ever is in the veterinary business. 
there's some tough times, obviously, when dogs aren't doing well, or cats, or whatever your pet is. But I'll tell Parakeet. you what, they can make bank because they just upsell you. Like mm-hmm. everyone gets mad, they don't want to pay an extra fifteen bucks for an upgrade airline seat. But at the vet, a buck fifty needs to be done, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, my buddy Doug McLean uh, had a dog. His daughter's dog was having trouble and had some major surgery and the vet phoned and said it, it was going to cost a lot the vet phone said 50 50 chance and doug said yeah well you better pick the right 50 because there's a 50 50 chance you're not getting paid if the dog doesn't survive <laughs> the dog doesn't live i don't need to yeah, pay that yeah. was good oh, yeah. speaking of 50 50 oh, i gotta tell you guys a story about stand up before i leave i was in san jose uh february 8th and somehow, talking with the crowd, somehow, I ended up with a fake leg in my hand on stage. All right? What's that to do with 50-50? Well, it's just one, one leg, the other leg's missing, oh. that's 50-50. So, oh. so uh, March, March 8th, I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. I end up with a fake leg in my hand. How? I have no idea. We bought what lottery tickets. I, I have no. I I, I actually used a, a Jeff. There was a lady at the front. She had one of those walking casts on. So I actually yeah. stole a line out of from Jeff. I said, "Oh, you got a bad wheel on you." Yeah. And she, and she said, "I. What are you talking about?" I said, "You got a bad foot. You got a bad wheel." And some guy from the back, that's nothing. Next thing you know, a fake leg comes passed up through the. <laughs> <laughs> So I just have this fake leg in my hand. Of course, it was the uh, yesterday was uh, on Sunday was the uh, Academy Awards. So I just held it and thanked the Academy. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. But two fake legs on the same date, a month apart. Crazy. Let's wrap this up. Wow. Okay. Mallard, you got any shout outs? Leg up. Uh, I, I leg give up. you a shout out. Uh, for joining us on the uh, on the program last night, that was a, that was a lot of fun. Uh, that was great, uh, and I can't wait to to do it a few more times. Not a lot, just a few more times. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, again, that was taken out. Of no, you guys are uh, you guys are really good together. You guys, I I, I hope whoever is watching that should really think that should be a sh- the show, and then a floating in, floating out kind of guy. You two, and then a floating yeah. in, floating oh, out geez. kind of guy. Uh, that, Loader. I guess we can yeah. do that on our podcast, but uh, you got a shout out, Lord Bag? Yeah, I do. It, uh, yesterday was my dad's 84th birthday. So big, big happy. Yeah, Gary. big happy birthday for Gary. Uh, hey, wow. Yeah, I'm going to go up and see them in a, in a month or something like that. And he, he's so funny. Happy birthday. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I got to tell a quick story about Gary before my, uh, my, my shout out here. So I, where Gary and his buddies used to go to the uh, A&W in Terrace. Highway 16, love going to a So I guess that could be part of my show. And uh, I show up and there's there's two people sitting beside Gary's table. And I'm like, hey, Gary, how you doing? He goes, uh, why don't you come join? Yeah, Gary says, grab a coffee and come join us. I go, well, there's not really anywhere to sit. But he goes, these two goddamn guys will move. <laughs> that's because that. he uses he them. Out of- that's Gary. Hey, yeah. you know, he's, he's so like, hey, that's that's the instat. So these two guys pick up and move a couple tables over. Oh, Gary told us, it's like, you know. <laughs> so I sit down uh, and have coffee with Ian's dad and his buddies and uh, a bunch of characters from, from growing up in Terrace. But uh, so happy birthday, Gary. Uh, but my shout out is to uh, our vet, Dr. Snyder. <laughs> so oh, no. hopefully today. <laughs> Not only do nice you pay. I got to shout her out. But no, actually, she's awesome. She is uh she helps us out whatever way she can. She's a big hockey fan, originally from Edmonton, uh, Alberta, now Vegas Golden Knights, and she goes to all the games. So I'm kind of want to shout her out so she doesn't hurt me too bad on the price of things today, but also because she always takes care of the of the two little ones we have at the house here. So shout out to her and love talk. I love that you you had to shout her out and say, That's don't hurt amazing. me too bad. But she's also a ticket season, a season ticket holder. No, thanks she's to Jeff. not a season <laughs> ticket holder. She just goes to the games now. She was a huge Oilers just fan goes to and the now game. she's Golden Knights. So we're, we're, we're uh, another Canadian cheering for the Knights. That'll get everyone in arms up there. But Another uh, conversion. I know. I know. So love, love to all. It. Love to all. <laughs>